everybody, and welcome to this episode of The Black Retreat. I am here with one of my semi-favorite people in the whole entire world. Semi. That's crazy. Deontay Gray! <laughs> I'm going to give a semi hand clap. <laughs> semi. I'm just playing y'all. Deontay is one of my favorite people. Um, and I love to start the Black Retreat off with how we met. That was great. Wow. If you could tell all the people how we met, if you remember. We met on the set of this. Uh... <laughs> you can say the show. <laughs> I'm just making sure this is the this is when we met. Uh, still broke. <laughs> yeah. By one of our friends, Sam mm-hmm. Buckner. Uh, mm-hmm. I think it's still on Amazon right now. If you want to yeah. go check that out. Still, still broke. broke. Um, still broke. Yeah, and it was. I think it was just kind of like an immediate like energy click. Um, it was just genuine people um, connecting. I think we were all like wide eyed, figuring out yeah how to like do anything on a set you know um and i think me and you just like instantly clicked just because i'm amazing she is amazing do you remember introducing yourself to me no i I I do um because first of all i had heard about him before we got to the set but then when i actually met him i was like oh like he cool i had went out to the car to get something i came back inside and you were walking out of the door, and I was, like, coming in. Mm-hmm. And you were like, hey, like. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you I do it? <laughs> you know how I be making fun of you. <laughs> yes. He does this thing. And he was like, hey, you know, how you, like, shook my hand. <laughs> my name is Deontay Gray. Uh, and I'm like, ah, <laughs> he's really nice. <laughs> Before that, what were, like, what were your expectations? Did you think I wasn't nice or? I didn't have any expectations. Okay. Someone that I knew was very fond of you. Okay. And I was just like, okay, like, I'm fit to meet this nigga. Like, I'm going to beat him up. <laughs> so you just want to smoke from the, from the jump. It's crazy. No, I was like, I was very like, um, you know when somebody's like hyping somebody up. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, like, well, he was about to be cool as hell. Yeah. And you were cool as hell. So, and I don't think you stayed the whole day, but I was like, oh, like, he's really nice. But we didn't start, like, hanging out, hanging out until I started hanging out with um, Troy and Leash. Mm-hmm. And then we became a little group. Well, I added to their group, and then we had a group, and then we all became one big group of one black people. Yeah. I know. It's so funny because when Raymond was here last time, Raymond went to NYFA. Okay. She was a screenwriter. Nice. And she was like, because we were talking about how we met, and she was like, I don't know. I just remember, like, one day I saw, like, a group of black people, and it was like, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, like, there was it's, a bunch of it's, us. It's funny. That's how I was because, and it's probably like there were, like, other races and stuff, too, but, like, yeah. I feel like black people just, like, Get it when they're when they're in an unfamiliar environment yeah. where you're not you don't usually see them. It's like, it's like that initial. Yeah. Are you cool? Yeah. <laughs> like we cool. But I feel yeah. like we were also like extroverted. Well, yeah. not you. Well, and I think like a lot of us, all of us are from the south. Well, I'm from the Midwest. Yeah, you are. It's like, I'm from Kansas City, Missouri, but, like, my family is from the South. So, like, very much so. Yeah. South, Southeast, like. Southern, Midwestern girl. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, it was was all cool, man. I miss our little group. I I was about to say, I I miss. I miss Leash. I miss all y'all. Yeah, and now she has a baby. I know. Like, we're growing up. Like, nobody lives here but me and Sam. Yeah, we just left y'all. Yeah, y'all really did. Deuces. Jerks. First of all, you're here because you're filming some stuff, for yeah. one. Mm-hmm. So, Deontay is a director, producer, writer. What else? I feel like I'm missing a bunch of stuff. Uh, cinematographer. Yeah. Um, DP. Yeah, I mean, I, I think... You dabble in acting every now and then. Basically, what I... Because we learned everything in film school. I know you were in the writing program. Mm-hmm. I was in the film and media production which uh more so focused on like the entire like 
ecosystem of filmmaking. Mm-hmm. So I got to dabble in pretty much everything and basically fell into directing and DP. And those were mm-hmm. the, those were the things that I really that I naturally kind of fell into that I loved and mm-hmm. obviously like writing and stuff too. I don't write enough. I need to write more. But, yeah, but you typically here. write because you'll write something and then direct it and yeah. produce it and, you know, yeah. all the things. Do you feel like, do you prefer doing your own stuff or do you enjoy, like, directing other people's stuff more? Or yeah. do they even compare, like? I think I still get the same joy out of directing somebody else's piece mm-hmm. as if I were to do my. I think... Because if I can find like the commonalities, because if 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 I'm agreeing to direct a piece, hopefully I'm seeing a part of myself in the piece. You know, yeah. with writing something, you naturally are writing something that an idea that you believe in. So it's easy to like go 100 percent in. So mm-hmm. in the case of like directing some somebody else's, as long as I can find that within yeah. the writing, then I think I have that same joy. But I I guess. There's nothing like your own shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> working on something that you create from the ground up. Yeah, your own idea. Um, so maybe naturally, like you're a little more um connected to it mm-hmm. from a personal level. Um, yeah, but I think I think it's I don't think it's too far from either spectrums. Working on somebody else's, working on somebody else, directing somebody else's script, mm-hmm. and directing your own. Um, so it it, it kind of just depends. Yeah, it kinda just depends. So do you feel like since okay, so you moved from LA to back home to Houston right. during the pandemic. Mm-hmm. And do you feel like there's a huge difference between the LA film market uh in comparison to Houston? And if so, which do you prefer? I would say my experience in both places were different are different. Mm-hmm. Um and I think the time in which I experienced had had something to do with that. Yeah. Um, because moving to Houston during COVID, I had to kind of figure out where my place was in the yeah. industry out there. Yeah. Um, so I think early on I was taking jobs I normally wouldn't take just, mm-hmm. just in just for the sake of networking. Yeah. Um, so in that I was in situations where I may have been working with producers and stuff that didn't necessarily line up with my with my ideology just Mm. as far as like just in general as humans and then from an industry perspective being on sets out here in LA I think there's a there's a clearer understanding of like positions like Mm -hmm. who does what yeah who does what this and that but in Houston and I think in Houston it's a lot more fluid yeah. Which can ha which can There's pros and cons. There's definitely pros and yeah. cons to that, you know what I'm saying? Um but I've been on the wrong side of the cons more yeah. so. Yeah. Um, and I think and I think that's I think kinda what I miss sometimes when I'm on sets. Yeah. Like the structure of it. Yeah. yeah. Right. And um, you know what's crazy? Like I didn't understand the structure so much until because as writers we really weren't on set that much in school mm-hmm. but y'all they sets was like together yeah. and i remember going to leisha's set and being like oh like who gave y'all the budget for this because they gave us them <clears throat> old ass cameras <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that yeah. we didn't know how to work but I definitely learned a lot of the film structure from y'all. Like, even going over Leisha's house and her being a producer mm-hmm. and AD and her having everything, like, listed on the wall. And I'm like, y'all got all these people to be on y'all sets? Like, it's, they gave us three people yeah. and a partner and in a group. And, like, I think it's very important the difference between, like, only having, like, a few people on set mm-hmm. and then as opposed to, like, ten 12 or even like 20 people on set like yeah. it makes a big difference yeah but. It, it it does make a difference it it definitely does but like even like what i'm realizing now like even though it is convenient to have more people on a set yeah um and and people knowing what their job is it's also important for me nowadays to just work with 
people I care about that I know care about me. Yeah. Um, for sure. I, I mean, I would, I'd rather work on a set with five people that mm-hmm. I know care about me and aren't going to put me in, in situations that are harmful mm-hmm. than working on a 20 crew set where yeah. it's like, I'm work like the, the producer or like the, I don't, the 80 or something doesn't care about yeah. the people on set and are taking advantage of our time and our energy yeah. and things of that nature. So For like, sure. you know, as I've, cause you know, film school was what, 2018, I graduated mm-hmm. 2019. So I've been doing this for five years now Mm -hmm. and anywhere I go, whether it's Houston, LA, Atlanta, like Mm -hmm. I'm cause you be jet set. I be, I be everywhere. (laughs) I ain't gonna lie. (laughs) Like my priorities are more so not only do I believe in the story, do I believe in the people Mm -hmm. and do I feel like they believe in me? Do they care about me? Um, can I stand with this person outside of just film? Mm -hmm. Like, do I believe in who they are as people? And, and you won't find that with yeah. everything. Like, there's ebbs and flows, but I try my best to find those sets. You know, that's crazy because we were just joking about, uh, you were like, I, I'm a different person than when I did the last one. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, you really have grown because yeah. I remember we used to be on the phone and you'd be like, yeah, I'm doing this thing tomorrow, these MS. <laughs> yeah. And I'd be like, Deontay, like, just tell people no. I know. Like, and, and I, that, yeah. That was that was a struggle for me, yeah. I think, because, and everybody's, like, journey is different, but I always just assume, yeah, I have to do these, the shit that I don't like. Yeah. So I can eventually do the shit I want to do, but mm-hmm. you really don't have to settle for that, honestly. No. Like, you, you really don't, and no is the most powerful word yeah. that a creator or an artist can have. Yeah, and, and it's annoying as a friend, like, seeing your friend yeah. being taken advantage of. Absolutely. And it's like, nigga, do you know who you are? For I'm like, <laughs> Come on. I'm like, you can tell people no. Yeah. Especially this MF. Like, yeah. I'm like, like, do you not know who you yeah. are? Like, I don't know. I, I feel like it's a combination <laughs> of, like, being kind and wanting to help people. Yeah. But at some point you have to be kind to yourself. Yeah. And like the the projects that are mentally draining that you don't believe in that you know are are taking advantage of you. Yeah. Like you you do have to like set a boundary like all right, no. And like I love it. Now I say no to every, I love no is my favorite. I, yeah. I'd be, like, be looking for a reason to say no. What? I'd be like, man, where can I mean, nope. Mm-mm. Nah, I'm not willing to do this. Oh, I done done this before. Oh, I'm yeah. not in the mental space to do this. Um, yeah. But I think it's beautiful though because it makes you so much more clear on the type of projects you want, the type of artist you want to be. Yeah. Um, because I think at least my goal is artistic autonomy. Like I want to get to a point where I'm making what I want, when I want and how I want it. Exactly. And I think the only way you can, and you will, man, come on, <laughs> speak on it. The only way you can do that is like making is, is being specific about the projects you take now. But yeah. I know like it's a balance, like, tr- cause this is hard. Like this is hard, like making a living doing yeah. this. Um, so it's, it's, it's a fine line, but yeah, no, no is one of the most powerful tools <laughs> yeah. any artist can have in their arsenal. And I'm so glad that you learned how to say no, because that was driving me and Alicia nuts. Yeah. Like, just, <sighs> but you're so kind. Yeah. DFA is a very kind person. Like, I can see why people will always ask you, like, why wouldn't they want you on their set? Like, you're, yeah. you're great. I Thank mean, you. I appreciate that. You you're nicer too. to other people than to me, but, uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> Chill. I just went, no. Cause like I for real style the, like y'all were something to attain in school, especially I'm like, Oh my gosh. Like I need to know the stuff they know. And I feel like that's so important to have like mentors mm. and people that are in the same, like arena as you there to like guide you and be like, you know, take the opportunity and the um, just being like, yeah, I'll help you with this. Because even like this, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know how to do this stuff. But right. like having a bunch of friends and a community of people that know more than you, I think that sometimes it's um, 
people don't like to ask for help. Yeah. And I think it's very important to know, you know, like the other people got you. Cause I think that that was one of my biggest, my biggest hardships, like finding people that I trusted here. And once I found like our little group, I was like, Oh, like, I feel like I can do anything. Mm. Like, and I think that, um, cause you and I, I think that, um, I never expected to be so close to you mm. because you are so introverted. Deontay is so introverted. Yeah. I feel like you're better now, but like I'm a little better. Yeah. I mean, this this business makes you have to be a little like less introverted. But yeah. still, my social meter be like low twenty four seven. Yes, I, man. I can only imagine, but yeah. like I um I don't know. I, I mean, I, I think I think. Here's the thing. I feel like I'm publicly introverted for sure. Yeah. But I think the people I'm cool with, I'm closest with, I ain't going to say I'm extroverted, but yeah. I'm a lot more open. Yeah. I'm a lot more um, available yeah. energy-wise because that's my thing. I I just be tired, man. Like, yeah. <laughs> people, people will wear you at. Like, people texting, will drain texting you. back yeah. is draining. <laughs> it is. <laughs> I'll be like, let me send this voice message real quick because uh, <laughs> I need to get out everything that I need to yeah, say. Yeah, <laughs> facts, so, facts. But do you feel like as being an introvert, it's harder for you to network or did it come pretty easily for you? Yeah, it's harder because I think there's times where I'm second, second guessing mm-hmm. my approach to network mm-hmm. with people. Um, I'm not as readily available to talk about myself as a lot of people I think are which is like a great skill you know what I'm saying and you know oftentimes you may be missing out just by not being more extroverted yeah um I think I I watched maybe Spike Lee's master class and he was talking about how how tough it was for him to get the money for Malcolm X and Mm -hmm. how he had to literally he was calling everybody you know what i'm saying and i think yeah it's a thin line because i I had to think about well it like if you believed in an idea so much would Mm. you be willing to be uncomfortable to like Mm. to get what you needed to make it happen yeah and every time of course like yeah Mm -hmm. so like i'm constantly like reminding myself of that when i'm when i when the easy thing to do is to like just say nothing and like and do nothing but, but it's hard even being extroverted. Yeah. Again, asking people for stuff. It's just complicated plain. Yeah. Um just so loud. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, no. Oh, we right right about Burbank everywhere. Yeah. 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 Don't you tell people where I live. That's true. But <laughs> I, I love Burbank Airport, by the way. If you could have any um superpower, what would it be? Damn, I don't wanna pick nothing basic because it but I also don't like, cause I could say like Professor X, like reading people's minds, but like I don't want to that, cause mm. you get overwhelmed after a while. I feel like you would, cause yeah. like, cause you read everybody's, like it's just like a constant conversation all day with yeah. like a bunch of different people. Honestly, I think flying would be the most grounded power that I could have, cause I don't feel too far removed from like humanness. Mm-hmm. I could just fly. I want to be invisible, but like. But what, what would you use your invisibility for? That's the know. thing. When, when you when you ask when you ask somebody what superpower would they have, you have to like. It has to be like a, like why are you gonna like how are you gonna use? I don't your know. Invisibility? I feel like I would use it selfishly. Like in what ways though? I don't know because I would just think to like listen in on people's conversations and stuff, or just like be places that I'm not supposed to be for real. Like <laughs> or like <laughs> say so you so you want to use the power to be nosy? Yeah. And also, like, if, say, I was getting mugged in a dark alley and I could just be like, oh, invisible, like, then I could just get away because you can find well, me. Like, true. it's a I, safety I, tactic. Okay. But you didn't you didn't say you wanted to use it for safety. You said you wanted to be nosy with Top it. Top two reasons. You didn't let okay. me get to the second one. My bad, my bad. But, I mean, I felt like that was really selfish of you to. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you wish you could turn invisible now. <laughs> No, I like, I think flying is just like cool, like to see the world from like 
that perspective. Yeah. And, like, to be able to, like, go anywhere you want to go. Yeah. And you've been traveling a lot. Yeah. Was that, like, a goal of yours? Like, I don't know if it was a goal of mine. Mm -hmm. I think... I think it became a goal. Not a goal, but it became a... An option. Mm Mm-hmm. Of figuring out myself once I went to film school. Like... Mm -hmm. Like, I know film school is not for everybody, but it was good for me because yeah. I think it kind of validated it validated the pursuit of finding oneself because I think as artists, we're constantly on that search for understanding mm-hmm. of ourselves. And I think when I made the decision to be an artist, the bet, like, when I made the decision, the- Ah, I can't talk. When I made the decision <laughs> to be an artist, a large part of that was I'm also making the, the the decision. I can't say decision today, to like always progressively like grow, yeah, and experience things. Mm-hmm. And naturally, with that comes going different places, seeing different things, yeah, and. It kind of just became like, yeah, of course. Any chance I get to go somewhere yeah. outside of everything I know, hell yeah, yeah, take that opportunity. Like, there's so much world out there, mm-hmm. and for so long, my world was just Houston, Texas. Yeah, and that was it. That's yeah. all I knew. That it, that's all I knew. And you just realize how much more of yourself you don't even know. Like how much more things you're interested in. Yeah what things you can do. Mm-hmm. And you're just like, man, if I was to stay in this box of thought all my life, the 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 many things I'd be missing out on is just so vast. Yeah. So, like, I love traveling so much. I love meeting people in different, mm-hmm. you know, regions of the world. Yeah. Um, and I just love, like, continuously broadening my perspective on mm-hmm. life. Um, what truth is, what my truth is. Yeah. Um, and how I much mean, do you feel like that's helped you in your artistry? I think it's helped tremendously, man. Because mm-hmm. I think we all just have biases that we naturally, we just, we, we have biases mm-hmm. in everything, anything we consider. So <clears throat> it's just helped me be more empathetic Yeah. to other people who are mm. different than me. Yeah. Um, understanding also that these um, issues and these um, different situations that mm-hmm. a lot of us go through in life, other people in the world are going through them too. So like, sto- yeah. like a lot of these stories are universal. Yeah. And like, it made me get into a lot of foreign films too. Like mm-hmm. I love foreign, I love foreign cinema. Yeah. Because um, you're just seeing these similar stories mm-hmm. from these different people who are millions of miles away from you. Yeah. But you can still like connect and like relate to it. Yeah. Um, and I just think that that that's the that's the that's the goal, at least for me. Yeah. Of my artistry is to constantly learn Mm -hmm. and apply those things to the craft yeah um and as i'm doing that learning new things about myself so Mm -hmm. yeah it's i mean it's integral it's integral i mean i a lot of like the shit i create is influenced from like korean cinema yeah you know what's your favorite foreign film my favorite foreign film is probably uh itu mama tambien um, it's by Alfonso Curran. Um, Come on, exit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a uh, it's this road trip movie um, about these two these two uh, teenagers um, who go on this road trip, and it's just it's so identifiable mm-hmm. with just like going on a trip with your homies and like mm-hmm. just I feel being like that's a kid. You, you know anyway. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You um, Monte and Nacho. <laughs> yeah, literally, all of them, all of them. Um, so probably, yeah, probably that movie. I mean, I could. I, there's a whole bunch of other foreign films, but when I think about like a movie that really just struck a chord mm. in me, I would say that one. Yeah, that's what's up. I've never yeah. even heard of it. Yeah, you I thought you were gonna say. Um, 
I don't know why. Did you tell me about this movie, In the Mood for Love? If Itu Mama Tembien is 1A, In the Mood for Love is 1B. Okay. In the Mood for Love is a beautiful, beautiful And I still movie. haven't seen it. I'm raggedy. No, you're, you're good. Honestly, a lot of like my visual references mm-hmm. are from like In the Mood for Love and like mm-hmm. Juan Wai, who's the director. A lot of his stuff um, creeps into my work because I love his aesthetic of longing, mm. the way he uses colors and the way he... It's just poetic. Yeah. It's so poetic. So that was going to be that. I mean, it flips. Sometimes it's in the yeah. mood for love. Sometimes it's eat through my mind and being. So that's funny. I told you that. But yeah, yeah. he, I think he is, he has such a poetic feel for filmmaking that I really admire. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, another filmmaker that I know you love, Barry Jenkins. Do you feel like he has that same poetic? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I think, I mean, in, in in his uh, interviews, you hear him talk about Wong Kar Wai quite a bit mm-hmm. as you know, a I as an influence. So like, only I only watch those interviews with Deontay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm a nerd. I'm a nerd. <laughs> but I think the one thing that uh, the one thing that Barry does, I think, better than any filmmaker, in my opinion, is he gets the most out of his frames. To me, mm. I think his silent moments. They like speak for themselves. Like I think he he just directs emotion so well mm-hmm. in all of his works. Yeah. Like every movie, I just feel so like immersed in. Yeah, and I just it's beautiful. It's sad. It's like so many different things, and I just really respect the way he um, kind of takes it there. And I feel like mm-hmm. he cares about the audience quite a bit when he makes things. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I, lo- I mean, I love Barry. Like if if I could be half the filmmaker he is, shut up, I, stop. I know what I'm doing. Don't something. say no shit like that, because I genuinely feel like your film style is very much that. Like when you were shooting um, horror scopes, uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And Deontay be like, wait, I need like five more minutes so I can get this shot in. Like, yeah. I feel like um, the way that you direct is very poetic as well. Thank you. And I feel like, like, do you think that Barry Jenkins is successful? Outside looking in, yeah. I yeah. mean, he would have to tell you what success to him. But, mm-hmm. but do you feel like you're successful? Yeah, I do. I do. Mm-hmm. I think. And why? You know, for a long time, I didn't view. I thought success had to look a certain way. Mm-hmm. But I think realizing the type of artist I want to be was yeah. success to me. Mm-hmm. And it still is success. And I think, sure, there's things that I want to do. Mm-hmm. But I know why I want to do them. Yeah. There's no, I think for a long time it was doing this will validate me being a good artist. Mm-hmm. And it's not that anymore. Yeah. Um, it's very much moving with intentionality mm-hmm. saying something in the arts and however and however time like that manifests mm-hmm. to me that's success because i feel like filmmaking just naturally is a very invasive process yeah um it's capitalistic in nature too yeah so it's easy to like want to view the art as a form of this can make me a certain amount of income. Mm-hmm. This can give me a certain level of status symbol. Yeah. And I never, I guess I realized that I don't want to be swayed by that when I create things. Mm-hmm. Um, because I think the, the great artists that I respect, that mm-hmm. I really enjoy and love, they really value, again, artistic autonomy. Like mm-hmm. doing things that feel correct that feel right that extend beyond just right now yeah it's it's like a it's it's a spiritual like experience Mm -hmm. when they make things so like and i'm still like and it's not an everyday thing like sometimes i imposter syndrome does creep in here and there yeah but i i just love like when i'm in those moments where i'm not thinking about what this film can do for me Mm -hmm. what what somebody i'm i'm really just in a moment of I'm getting lost in the process of making something that feels true, that feels authentic. And I just, I value that as success Mm. because 
because it's so easy to think the other it's so easy to be of a different thought process yeah um so yeah that's that, that's kind of how that's kind of how i move within the idea of success mm-hmm. like i'm not i'm not worried about no kind of awards i'm not worried about you won't know. get them though and if they come great it's coming and if they come <laughs> <clears throat> if they come great um yeah. but it's just i mean yeah whatever man i'm I'm trying to leave a lasting impact. Mm-hmm. And prior to doing filmmaking, yeah, you were in the NFL. <laughs> <laughs> Had a whole different life. <laughs> and who who did you play for when you were? In yeah, the NFL? I played I played play, uh, a year with the Texans. Um, mm-hmm. I I tore my ACL for the second time before, right before our first preseason game, so I never. Mm-hmm. I never actually got to play a regular season game, even though I went through training camp and everything. That is so um, raggedy. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? I'm, again, like, uh, I'm thankful for that second injury because that was the moment I really got to, because for the longest, I identified myself with football. Like, football mm-hmm. was a huge part of my and identity. Your, your dad played football? Yeah, he did. Yeah. He did. Yeah, my dad played football. Um, he played in the league with the Redskins. Um well, they're not the Redskins anymore because oh, yeah. that shit is racist. So mm-hmm. I'm glad they got rid of that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I guess they're the Washington Commanders now. But yeah. um, just being from the South, Texas, mm-hmm. like, you know, I'm, I mean, and I also viewed it as like a way to go to college and stuff. Because, mm-hmm. you know, my parents wasn't paying for college yeah. and all that. Um, but yeah, yeah, football football was a huge part of my identity for a really long time. and. Mm-hmm. When I got that second injury, that that knee injury, um, I really had to take time to figure out what else like mm-hmm. interests me. Yeah. Um, Cause what did you? What was your major while you were playing football? So I did major in film and media production, but like it wasn't like a throw. I don't want to call it a throwaway major. But oh, it, you it, was like I'm no, 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 just, no, no, I'm no, no, just no, do no. this real quick. <laughs> <laughs> so I could just get this little degree. <laughs> no, but like what a, what the problem was? I started off as a business major, and the business major was taking like a lot of like my time studying trying to maintain like a high gpa and stuff like that and it was mm-hmm. like affecting my elective so like i was talking with my mom and she's like you know try something it's fine like you can always circle the block she didn't say circle the block but you can yeah, always I'm come back but you can always you know come back and if you want a business degree like you can do that but like shout out to karen Gray. you know like just find something that you think you'll be interested in mm-hmm. so i i saw we had a film program did that and it, it, I guess it was that was the very first seed plant of, oh mm. maybe I could do this. Maybe this this might be something cool to think about after. Yeah. Um, football is over. So I, you I never, hadn't done like any films or anything before you uh came to NIFA? No, I did. Uh-huh. I, I I had created um some visuals because after like I said after I got injured, I I started getting into photography a mm-hmm. lot. Um. So finding my scope in photography and then, you know, um, even I was thinking about traveling a lot, too. Mm -hmm. So I would do like these visuals, um, like these kind of travel vlogs. Um, I was real into. Oh, yeah. On your YouTube. Yeah. 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 (laughs) I had a little YouTube thing where I was like travel vlogging. Um, You should really be doing it now. Like. mm, Like. Maybe. But like it's. I'm I'm not the same artist that I was back then. Yeah. I think back then I was like, I was figuring out things and I was doing things because, oh, this is cool. Mm. Like this, and yeah. t- to be fair, like I, it helped me, it helped me like it helped me find like my creative eye, mm-hmm. um, and what I like, what things move me, yeah, um, visually. But yeah, I I think that was just like a stepping stone to going to film school because it did help me get into film school and then mm-hmm. really figuring out what does it mean to be an artist yeah um and then yeah since then i kind of like you know took off yeah you definitely did take off <laughs> is there anything like that made you realize like this is like anything specifically mm-hmm. that made you realize like this is what i want to do or was um, it just like a gradual type of thing or do you ever remember a moment where you were like, yeah, this is exactly what I'm supposed to be doing? 
I can remember like those first few months in film school and my first film being really bad and me feeling like I was really behind the curve because, you know, a lot of people who go to film school, this is that they, they've been interested in movies like for the longest. Boy, because that, that wasn't my journey. Oh, uh, yeah. So you was like me then because yeah. I was, I mean, I just, I couldn't keep up like, with the film history, like mm-hmm. I couldn't, like Same. I didn't, like I was just kind of doing shit off the vibes. Yeah, and I get, I'd get by, but like my first film, um, like my directing teacher like chopped my shit up, and I mm-hmm. was like, oh damn, like this don't <laughs> feel good. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. It was something about like, it was still something about the process of creating it that like yeah. made me excited to get back into it again. Mm-hmm. And when I did my next film which was such an improvement from the last and just getting that feedback. Like it just, it was like addicting. Like I was just like, Oh, okay. Like now I'm understanding how to tell story through images. Mm -hmm. And with that, having a voice and taking these classes and because at first, I'm just consuming information for, from a teacher. Yeah. And then there came a point, maybe my second and third film, where I think the directing teacher maybe didn't agree with a decision I made. And I was like, well, no, I actually did this because of this. Mm-hmm. And you was like, I know this is rocks. how we're taught, but like, yeah. also, I, I think this is conveying what I'm trying to say a little yeah. more. And he was like... I can like respect that, mm. and like I was like, oh, okay, mm. like I'm starting to, I, I'm start, I'm starting to, get, I'm starting to get this a little more, and I'm yeah. starting to get this a little better, and I think it's just, it just got addicting because not only is filmmaking a form of expression, yeah, you're constantly learning, mm-hmm. it's hard as hell. Like I think that's my thing also. I never want to do something that was just not gonna challenge me. Like, yeah, this, I think this this practice continuously challenges you. Mm-hmm. I don't think you can ever get it. Like, yeah, there's always, there's always new ways to look at things. There's yeah. always new technology, all that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then just realizing like, even when I retired from football, I didn't really, I also for the longest football, when you play football, you don't really, value your mind like that mm. you constantly like concussions and stuff like you you like what an awful truth i mean it's it's, it's the reality yeah. it's it's the most dangerous sport in the world yeah all that contact like, and high speed contact yeah. and you see these people who like lose themselves mm. from like concussions and stuff and i just really was like thankful that i like I still have like a piece of my brain that I can utilize for good yeah. and for self expression. And all those things just kinda made sense to me. Yeah. And I just I really became addicted to the idea that you can't like box me into one mm. type of person. Like yeah. I'm so much more than an athlete. Yeah. Um Yes you are. And yeah, I, I yeah, I just started getting it, man. I started Sitting like I was, you got you got ask my classmates like I was sitting in the front of the class like I was on some nerves. Yeah, shit. they definitely used to talk about you. I know they did. It's cool though. It's cool. Um, but, what did but they I was call just, you? Uh, oh, the teacher's pet. Teacher's pet. Yeah. 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 I I heard that a couple times. <laughs> but you know what, man? It's like it's like a kid in a candy store. Like when yeah. you when you find like something to be excited about mm-hmm. you just want to consume 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 yeah. consume and that's that's what i want to do i was like oh man like this is like you can really say something with this yeah and mm-hmm. i and again like like i told you i felt so far behind everybody else because this because i had just like i was only interested in it for like two years yeah or, like i mean while i was in undergrad but we wasn't really learning the process like that um so i was just like man i don't want to miss out on this opportunity to yeah. like know how to use the tools to say what I want to say. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I was in, I was in front of them classes learning yeah. 
being confused, asking questions. <laughs> yeah. Like, I didn't leave a stone unturned. Yeah, you was not playing. Mm-mm, for nah. real. But do you feel like you found your voice in filmmaking? Or do you feel like you're still searching for it? I think I'm still searching. I mm-hmm. think... I don't know if I ever want to find my voice because I don't ever want to... I don't ever want to get to a point where my voice can't be changed by an experience or by somebody. Mm -hmm. I think, I think if I'm not continuously making things that challenge why I believe what I believe, Mm -hmm. then, then I'm not doing it like for like the right reasons. Reasons. You know what I'm saying? Like Mm -hmm. there, there's so much to storytelling. There's so much to image making that I think in finding my voice, I'm always going to be in search of what this means. What's this truth? Like what's yeah. this and that? So yeah, I I think I'm, I'm still searching. Yeah. But like, it's exciting because I'm always consuming information. Yeah. Um, and there's always questions to be asked and yeah. mirrors that need to be held up to myself, yeah. my community, mm-hmm the world yeah um so it's you know constantly figuring out where i stand in that and how i can be of service Mm -hmm. um to people so So, (laughs) if you could teach a master class on anything what would it be i'm so glad you asked this because (laughs) no for the longest i thought teaching was lame like i was like i'd never be no teacher like that shit weak but like yeah no Becoming an artist again, like, yeah, it's like, man, like, I would love to teach a class where music intersects. In oh, I'm making. sorry, shout out to teachers. I definitely just, oh, absolutely, was acting, yeah, I, didn't, I wasn't trying, I was to, being silly. I hope but I wasn't, no, no, shout out to teachers. Teachers are, ama- I, yeah, <laughs> I, think, I didn't think I could be a teacher because of what it demands. Mm-hmm. I, I respect yeah. teachers so much. Boy. Um, but yeah, I think I would want to teach a class of how music, specifically jazz, intersects, mm. uh, how those Cute. things can um, <laughs> help you tell stories. Yeah. Um, so a class like that, or even like a class that's based on how do we how do we express ourselves in a non traditional way. Mm. Um. You know, like that. I, I I feel like that. I feel like that class was missing in my mm. filmmaking experience. I feel like yeah. I got all the. Oh, you should watch this movie. You should watch this movie. Yeah, very uh, like do this, 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 Citizen but not Kane. like. Of course, yeah. Of course, the only black movie we saw was Do the Right Thing. Oh my gosh. They lo- they love showing that. Oh, which is fire. But like, damn, like, what about Daughters of the Dust? Like, every opportunity <clears throat> that I got, whenever we had like a project or something. I was like, oh, I'm going to do a black film because y'all not going to act like, like, why are we in film school still watching um, freaking Raiders of the Lost Ark? <laughs> like, I'm like, what does this have to do with anything? And I, I, while I do think that, you know, the early films are important, mm-hmm. I feel like one thing that our film school did lack was like modern films. That's what I'm, Yeah, I think... <clears throat> Like, I'm interested in cultivating the next auteurs that's coming up. Like, I don't want, like, I don't want to recreate. Like, I don't want any knockoff Steven Spielberg. Yeah. Knockoff, like. Like, do your own thing. Really, Scott. You know what I'm saying? Like, Mm -hmm. I'm interested in a filmmaker from Kansas City who ain't never, who ain't never seen any of these movies. Right. And I hadn't. And, and (laughs) and, And maybe they don't even, like connect with these movies to that same level but you show them a painting of a basquiat and they Mm -hmm. interpret and they and they make the next spider verse or something like it's yeah it's though it's that kind of that type of like class that that just really allowed you to freely be experimental that i think would be really cool to teach yeah and i think i like the idea of jazz being jazz intersecting with artistic expression because I feel like jazz is such an improvisational art form yeah. in itself 
that each time you listen to it, depending on your mood, you can it can make you think about so many different things. Yeah. So I, I'm those two classes like intersecting jazz and and creativity, maybe mm-hmm. in a film format, and also like like the unseen, like yeah, unseen films or like yeah. the yeah. films that they don't show you in right. film school, but um, that mean something. Yeah, because like, I'm like, man, if like I'd be like, man, if somebody would have showed me. Like Killer Killers of Sheep mm-hmm. is a is a film by Charles Burnett who was part of he's part of like that group of UCLA filmmakers who mm. um I don't I don't wanna explain it wrong, but there's like a group of UCLA filmmakers who mm-hmm. make these really like experimental, thought provoking black ass films. Mm-hmm. But they didn't necessarily they didn't necessarily fall like in the structure that yeah. we're used to. Um I think I would have I would have been more brave in mm-hmm. how I express myself because I think and naturally like you're learning from teachers who see film one way yeah um, but it's like if this is an art form I should be able to I should be learning the tools to express myself the way I want yeah because not everybody yeah. not everybody desires to be a blockbuster filmmaker yeah because that that's true if you want to be a blockbuster filmmaker there is a certain yeah way you can go about it but yeah like, there's a model for sure may, somebody somebody might want to be uh like khalil joseph who mm-hmm. is a he's a filmmaker but he, a lot of i mean his stuff is like very um non-commercial mm. but it hits every time yeah and maybe that 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 might be what somebody wants to do so yeah, yeah. I, just showing like the different ways you can be because i feel like just like in general, as an independent filmmaker, you can do more. Yeah. Like, but the problem is, was that the, a yawn? No, no, no. I was. Wake up. It was not a yawn. <laughs> Stop. It was not a yawn. What I was gonna say is, but it's just because we do want to be compensated for what we do, as yeah. we should. I mean, we live in a capitalist society. Yes, we should. Um, the capitalistic nature of filmmaking, I think, early it, on, yeah. can like. It drives you, yeah, and it, yeah. It, it 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 can it can um, obscure the creative process. Yeah, um, yeah, it's such a, it's such a thin line, though, man. Yeah, it's, it's really a thin line. Cause you can make money without having blockbuster films. Mm-hmm. Cause like a lot of these, even like actors that we see as like B list actors, yeah. but like you see them in everything. So I'm like, they probably make it more than, you know, the A-listers that are just waiting for, like, the next big hit. Mm. So, but I think you see, you know, yeah. a lot of them doing both because of that. Like, everybody's trying to make money. Yeah. But everybody does want to stick to their, you know, like, um, ideologies. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not about to just be doing nothing, but also, like, yeah, I need to pay my rent. Yeah. So. <sighs> yeah, I know. It's tough. What, I, what, I'd be interested to know what class you would teach if you had the opportunity you know I, I asked this question to everybody and i ain't never thought about it myself yeah um i might have to get back to you nah, on that that's one. cool that's cool <laughs> i mean I, I i love that question because like i don't know like that's something that's a seed plant like to eventually give back yeah at some point you know because in my mind i'm the person that allows the people to be able to teach the master classes like at some point I feel like I switch my like my goals and visions to be like you know I'll be joking and I'll be like oh I'm finna be a mogul but like nah like I for real thank you (laughs) like I for real cause like and also I, I ask the question because I intend on having a space where my guests can teach a master class on something yeah so like because the black retreat is small now, but mm-hmm. I want it to be big. And I feel like getting there, because the class that I would teach, I don't know everything on it yet. Right. Like, I feel like that would probably be it. Like, how can you go from knowing absolutely nothing about, <laughs> about like, being a CEO to being a CEO? Mm-hmm. Like, but I can't teach that class, so I become a CEO. Mm-hmm. So, like... That is my pipeline. 
I feel like I see myself in this place that I'm not at yet. Mm. But like once I get there, I'm going to be able to be like, this is how you do it. Mm. A, B, and C. But it's hard as hell. So, yeah. you know, but yeah. I I, 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 could de- <laughs> I, I mean, we need those people. Though, yeah. Because, you know, I could have ideas all day, but how am I going to execute that? Or yeah. Who, who can I bring this idea to? Yeah. Who, who would know like, or who would be as excited to like make it happen? Yeah. And I feel you know like, like I was telling you earlier, sometimes you'll bring an idea to somebody and they won't care or they won't be excited like you are. And it's like, <sighs> well, damn, like, <laughs> <laughs> well, this is like, a it, like, it's really unfortunate, but like, I do want to be one of those people that you can come to and be like, I got this idea and I'm like, oh, here's money for it. Hell yeah. And I think that I learned that if I was just in film, mm. I might not become that person. So it's like I have to do 17 other things to ensure that the filmmakers that want to be independent and maybe don't want to, you know, be a blockbuster, get the things that they need to Mm. become the people that they want to be, especially black people, because I'm black and I want to hear more black stories. And that's what I grew up on. And that's what, you know, I want to just enrich the people. No, I want <laughs> man. No, I mean we yeah. we we need that, and that's like a great way to give back. And you know, I I often, uh, me and my boy Mete, who's at Juilliard. Oh, Mete, I'm gonna have to get him on here. Oh, he would he would oh. he would destroy this. Yeah, yeah. He would he would put me to shame. <laughs> Which, which isn't hard to yeah. do, by the way. But I'm just saying. Shut up. The, Omete like, and Deontay are two completely different people. Like, that can, you is bring, it. can you bring that Omete guy back? No. <laughs> but what's, it's just crazy because we talk a lot. And, yeah. you know, we're, and that's part of like, I'm starting to see how this idea of not being able to see the things that are possible yeah. influences a lot of my work. But we talk, we, 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 we talk a lot about um, how growing up, we never saw like, niggas being actors and mm. directors and writers what yeah. like like how like for that to even be an option and for us to even kind of find our way into that yeah. is like almost a miracle because yeah. we didn't we we not seeing that shit we seeing niggas who run fast and mm-hmm. catch and hoop yeah which we were yeah and we also seeing like <laughs> you like, know <laughs> the, the other side obviously the other side of like yeah you know, people trapping and stuff like that, but yeah, but also like people being very um regular, like you know, everybody got everyday jobs, like, yeah. and I think that before I decided to do film, I just assumed that was gonna be my life. Like mm. I'm, a, I'm gonna have a regular job, I'm gonna have a regular yeah. family, I'm gonna live in Kansas City. That, by the way. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. But at some point, I was like, this is not enough for me. Mm-hmm. Like, that, mm-hmm. this wouldn't be okay with me. Mm. And I genuinely, like, switched. Because I was very much so, like, I'm a, give me a husband. I'm finna get married. And I'm gonna have me a whole bunch of kids. Well, it was never a whole <laughs> bunch. But <laughs> but a few kids. And I'm gonna I'm a just be chilling. And I feel like that life is, for me, yeah. was, like, simple. Like it was, it was just easier Mm -hmm. and like, um, and not, I can't even say easier because it's not easy being a mom and a wife and stuff, but like it was, what's the word I'm looking for? Settling, content, natural, natural, Mm. just like, yeah, I'm gonna just do this. But then like something was like, no, you're not (laughs) like, you're absolutely not going to do just that. And I think that coming out here because I feel like like I heard a lot of stories about people coming to LA like oh I came to LA with the last $12 in my pocket but like it really be like that but thankfully that was not my journey because I wouldn't have survived with $12 and like nowhere to live because Jesus it's expensive out here it it is so expensive out here but like going to school was such it was so beneficial for me when I decided to, like, do this podcast, there are so many, like, pieces of my life that I realized I, like, pulled to do this. Because mm. even, like, the sound, I used to be in the sound room, 
with my daddy at church every Sunday. Like I was like his assistant sound director person. Mm. And so when I got this, cause I was like this, like a, a, a mixer comes more natural to me. Oh, wow. Because, and everybody was, the boys were all like, oh, we ain't never seen that before. <laughs> I'm like, how do you work this? And then, like, I had called my daddy, and he like, you know how to work that. Like, this is, like, this compared to, like, a, a oh, yeah, Jesus. Them, ch- them things the, be The like, church ones, yeah, they, be, they be, huge. be huge. And, like, you did this every Sunday for 12 years. Like, stop acting like that. But, I don't know. It's just so easy for, to forget. But I feel like, in those moments, that's when I'd be like, girl, you was always being created to be this person. Like, yeah. And it's it, Jesus. Come on. But, uh, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's funny how when you kind of take a step back and look at where you're at now, you mm-hmm. can like kind of pinpoint like things that you may have subconsciously taken into mm-hmm. like where you are now. Yeah. Because I feel like yeah. even you, like, playing football and stuff, like, that wasn't in vain. Like, oh, no, no, no. Yeah. Absolutely. Man, I, I, my work ethic comes from football. Mm-hmm. Like, my the uh, the chip on the shoulder attitude, the, the never give up attitude. Mm-hmm. That, I mean, that's, that's all engraved in my brain from athletics. Yeah. And sports. Yeah. Because um, it's crazy how one thing can, like, affect something else but you don't like realize it right off the bat Mm -hmm. but there's these like pockets of time in your life where you be like dang if i wouldn't have did this i I probably wouldn't be doing this right and it seems so like far-fetched but really it's like nah what is your personal motto i don't i mean i do like that motto and i I'll, i'll go with that because i do think you only get out what you put in um like even into the world, like more like at, for a long time, it was an idea of like work ethic. Mm-hmm. Like I'm only get out what I put in, like in the gym, uh, on the field, mm-hmm. grinding. Like if I don't, if I don't put in work at seven in the morning on a Tuesday, I'm not gonna see those results on game day on yeah. Saturday or Sunday. But I also think like you only get out of the world what you put into it. Yeah, for sure. Um, so. If you want people to be kind to you, mm-hmm. you ought to be kind to them. You ought to. If you wanna, if you wanna, if you wanna be somebody, <laughs> if you, <laughs> if, if you desire to learn more about the world, you need to learn more about yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So I think I think it's just constant, like from within, to get the most from without. Yeah. And I think you only get out what you put in is a. I mean, it's a great it's a great way to go about your day too, cause mm-hmm. you know you wake up in the morning, you see what's on your to do to do list and all that, um, and if you want to reap those benefits of um, how you are attacking the day, then you know there's a cer- there's a certain way you go about it if you want to see those results. I mean it's just like going to the gym or anything. So I I I do like the I do like that model you only get out. Yeah. Uh what you put in and I think I subconsciously wake up every day knowing you know if I want to be purposeful in my walk in life mm-hmm. and how I'm treating people, treating myself then I have to do it with a certain internal intentionality to mm-hmm. receive that back. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm gonna go with. I like that. Well, thank you for coming to the Black Retreat. And get rich or die trying. That's my other one. <laughs> okay. Fuck you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for coming to the Black Retreat. I'm your host, Misha L. And again, this is Deontay Gray. You can follow him on all of his social media platforms. And what are you working on now? I'm working on. If anything, because. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, some NDAs. I can't. I'm just playing. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, it actually is. Yeah. But um, I'm working on my first feature. Ooh. Um, and in the meantime, I'm, uh, I'm DPing a lot of projects that I'm mm-hmm. excited about. Yeah. Um, there's, there's this web series idea that I'm really excited about it that's, like, 
more so experimental, mm-hmm. like similar to what we were talking about. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I just think there's there's um there's a lot of exciting things that mm-hmm. I think are on my plate that can be used to inspire. Hallelujah. Other people, in yeah. this generation, um, and that's what I'm about right now. In my yes. artistic journey. So stay tuned. Stay tuned, guys, and thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Black Retreat. See you next time. Cheers. Cheers. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you.